Why do people who have an intellectual disability or autism or both ask for euthanasia or assisted suicide? And what are the grounds on which doctors grant their requests for help to end their lives? We looked at 39 such cases in the Netherlands where it is legally possible to have euthanasia, um, and that is a doctor ending a patient's life at that patient's request, or assisted suicide, that is a doctor helping a patient to end their own life. For that request to be granted, the doctor has to be convinced that the patient's suffering is unbearable and that there is no prospect of improvement. So what were the main causes of suffering that led these 39 people to ask a doctor for help in ending their lives? We found that for eight people, it was the characteristics of autism or intellectual disability itself that were the only causes of suffering described in the report. For example, a man in his 20s was suffering from his inability to form relationships exhausted from the effort in making contact with others and struggling with his need for clarity and structure. And his doctor agreed that there were no realistic options to relieve his suffering apart from an assisted death because his suffering stemmed from characteristics of autism, which is not curable. For another eight people, their suffering was caused by the fact that their intellectual disability or, or autism made it too difficult for them to cope with aging or an illness that wasn't in itself life-threatening. For example, a woman in her 70s couldn't cope with having to change her eating pattern after surgery for a curable stomach cancer. Her doctor explained in the report that changing her habits was more stressful to her than starvation and her inability to adapt made euthanasia the preferred option. For a further eight people, issues such as these that are associated with intellectual disability or autism were not the only factor, but a significant contributing factor. For 15 people, the causes of suffering stemmed from physical or psychiatric conditions that were unrelated to the person's intellectual disability or autism. So in two thirds of patients in our study, the reasons for their assisted death were related exclusively or mostly to the characteristics of intellectual disability or autism itself, not an acquired medical condition, but a condition that is an inherent part of the person. The most frequently described specific causes of suffering were loneliness. More than three quarters of case reports mentioned this as one of the reasons for euthanasia. Physical symptoms such as pain, being dependent on others, being unable to cope with illness or indeed with life, poor quality of life, loss of hope, and a lack of flexibility, so being unable to cope with changes. For this study, I worked with three other researchers from the Netherlands and the UK. And between us, we have significant expertise in the fields of intellectual disability, palliative care, and assisted dying legislation in various countries. What exactly did we do? In the Netherlands, doctors have to report every case of euthanasia or assisted suicide to a euthanasia review committee, which reviews whether the legal criteria were followed, including whether and how the doctor was able to conclude that there was unbearable suffering without prospect of improvement. A selection of these case reports are anonymised and published on the Euthanasia Review Committee website. We searched the website for cases involving patients with an intellectual disability or autism. We found 39 case reports. We analysed these reports line by line, extracting all descriptions of signs, symptoms and circumstances that had caused the patient to suffer. If you want to find out more, we have summarised our methods, findings and conclusions on a poster, or you can read our full paper. We will be interested to hear what you think and what your conclusions are. Thank you.